we are electromagnetic beings, right? That's how we're created. And so we do all these tests that test us electromagnetically, e electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography, magnetic resonance imaging, because we're electromagnetic. And yet, and I don't remember a, a big white light type of experience with that, but because I've always believed that science supports we are fundamentally electromagnetic, it shouldn't come as a surprise to us that although medicines can help acutely, they don't often help in many situations long-term. How many people on long-term medications, the dose needs to increase, it needs to switch because our bodies are smarter than we are. And I think <laughs> when I know they're smarter and our brains are smarter than we are. And when we introduce an appropriately chosen pharmaceutical for some indication, uh, our bodies and what we deal with are smarter. And so we have to increase dose. And I feel like particularly with kids with seizures, sometimes we'll bring in a seizure medicine, anti-seizure medicine, and they seizures kind of, oh, okay, I got this. I, I, I'm going to be quiet. And then the brain goes, bring it on because I'm going to, I'm ready. For this. <laughs> and we need, to, because it will accommodate, not like in addiction per se, but it gets smart. It knows its workarounds. I mean, we've seen that in the simple analogy of penicillin when it was first discovered and how many thousands of units and now how many millions organisms, living organisms that are also electromagnetic, which is why we're seeing problems throughout the mammalian world, the bee population, all these kinds of things, but they respond um, and get smarter. So now we have millions and millions of units to treat something 